Good morning, this is Ms. Bornars. I'm going to be covering some circuit math for Rio Hondo's Fall 2020 Auto 106 class and Downey High's uh, third year automotive class. So we've got I apologize for my loud system writing here. This is circuit math two. The first one uh, covered series. This is going to cover parallel. But before we get into the uh, parallel circuit math, we need to make a few points about uh, parallel circuits itself. Okay, so let's get rid of this right here. Now, just uh, please excuse my lousy drawing here. If I, it's not going to work right there, is it? <laughs> no, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so if I got my super fantastic looking container here, right? Janky looking can that I found in the yard or something like that. Okay, and I go ahead and I. Oh, whoops. I go ahead and I fill it all the way up with water, right? And I'm not going to go ahead and fill it all in because there's something going on below here that I'm going to show you. Okay, and let's just go ahead and say that I take my can, has water in it, and I poke a little hole. Okay, I get a screwdriver, a nail, a pick, or something like that. I poke a hole in it. Water is going to come out. Okay, we have no problem with this at all. Water is going to come out and start pouring onto the ground. Okay, or into a bucket or a bowl or whatever I got. Okay, the reason the water is going to flow out is because I have gravity and air pressure working on it. Now, that flow that's in here, okay, the water that's waiting is going to go through this little tiny hole and come out at a certain rate because the pressure isn't going to be changing, okay? Gravity is going to go ahead and um, act on it as well as the air pressure. One little hole, one little pathway, water is going to flow. So I have pressure. I have a little bit of resistance right here, but not, uh, you know, not, not a mountain of it. That way, water is going to flow on out, okay? And this would be my flow. So gravity would be voltage, current would be the water, and the resistance would be this little hole. Now, if I were to go ahead and add another little hole, I would in turn get more flow and more water, right? More would come out. More would come out. And if I added a, another hole, yet again, more water would come on out. Right? There we go. Now, using an example like this, as simple as it is, would um, simply mean that uh, the more pathways for flow I have for water to come out would mean that I would get more water coming out. In electrical terms, the more pathways I have for flow, the more flow I would have. Okay? And then having looked at some other uh, ideas in electrical, if my pressure is staying the same, right, okay, my voltage is staying the same, and I go ahead and I lower my resistance, right, my current flow is going to go up. So if I drop my resistance, my current's going to go up. If I raise my resistance, my current is going to go down. Well, right here back at our, our cup with all the water coming out of it, we have got more and more flow coming the more and more pathways we add. So the more pathways we add, we have to be dropping the resistance because we know we're getting more flow. Okay? This becomes an important idea here in a little while when it comes to the... Um, the circuit math we're going to involve ourselves with here. All right? So I need you to keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and clear this canvas up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw 
little parallel circuit here. Oops. Come on. Sorry about the uh, bad drawing here, but I'm not an artiste. And then we'll go ahead and try to find all these symbols online and fiddle with it with a bunch of cut and paste. But we'd be here forever while I fiddled with that. And it's just easier to just do this like I would do in class on a whiteboard. And I'm getting better at the one that I have here like this. So right here, we have a very simple series circuit, right? We have our ground path, the little upside down Christmas trees here, right? We've got our battery, positive and negative side to it, okay? Clean this up a little bit, make that a little prettier. I've got a fuse, a circuit protection device, switch, a circuit control device. I have one load right now, and my path back to ground again. Okay, so I have a power source, I have a wire, connecting path, fuse, more wire, switch, more wire, light, more wire. My ground is equal. This is, like I've mentioned before, the same electrically. This keeps us from having to draw more lines and making the whole thing busier than it needs to be. So, let's see, I have 12 volts of uh, power, I'm sorry, 12 volts of, uh, of electrical pressure hanging out at the battery. Got the negative side here, positive side here. And let's see here for our bulb, let's just go ahead and call this a three ohm bulb. I would find that I have 12 volts total in the circuit, three ohms of resistance, meaning I would have four amps of current going through the circuit, okay? Four amps traveling through the circuit. In a series circuit, I know that my resistances add up. Okay, I know that in a series circuit, my current flow is the same throughout the circuit. So no matter where I check this, my current flow would be the same. I also know that in a series circuit, if I, oops, I don't think it's better at this and get faster. If I added another bulb back over here, okay, let's say this one was three ohms, that would add up. So I would end up having six ohms right here and then two amps, okay? Because I added resistance and my current flow would go down. So this would be two right here, okay? Well, in a parallel circuit, this changes, okay? If instead of adding resistors in series or adding loads in series, we do something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and clean some of this up here. Parallel circuit's going to do this. Got another little bulb. Another pathway to ground. Okay, so this would be the first hole that we poked in the cup. That would be the second hole we poked in the cup. And we may add a third hole and a fourth hole and what have you. All right? So let's go ahead and use the same ohms value for this one here. Now, looking at this, you could say, hey, I have 12 volts total in the circuit. That's not a problem. Now, we look at these, let's just here, let's clean things up here so we could think a little bit here. Resistance total, we don't know that yet. Amperage total, we don't know that yet. Resistor one value we know, resistor two value we know. Amperage one value we don't know yet, and the amperage two value. We don't know yet. When you see R1 or R2 or A1, A2, it's referring to what's on the different branches. Okay, so the first branch is second branch, right? So we don't know our resistance total. We don't know average total. So what we got to do is solve the branches here. We do know that on branch one and branch two, we do know our resistances. So we can start there. We have three ohms here. Oops. Oops, oops, I'm pushing, I'm pushing the wrong button here, I'm sorry. In three ohms, okay? Now, very much like working with 
the uh, uh, series um, circuit math, Ohm's law pi still functions here. So right here, I'm missing my amperage. I don't know what it is through this pathway here. I don't know my amperage is through this pathway here, okay? But we can use our Ohm's law pi. So if we come on over here and we cover up A, because we don't know that, we don't know our amperage, we have volts divided by ohms. So we have 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4. So we've got 4 amps going on right there. And then you look down at this one here. It's the same thing. Okay, because if I, if I cover this, this whole area up, I have one pathway here. 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4 amps. Okay, 12 divided by 3. Now, <clears throat> just like looking at our cup, we add up our flows because we poke those holes in that cup, right? And as we uh, poke holes in the cup, more water comes out. And more water ends up in the same place. And uh, letting us know that um, more of our flow uh, uh, adds up together. And the more holes we have, the more flow we have. So the more pathways we allow, um, we increase our current. So if we keep increasing our current, we have to be adding it up. Okay, so we have 4 plus 4 is 8. So our amperage total is 8 amps. Okay, well now we only have one missing factor in this whole thing right now. And that's our... our um, our ohms total here. So if we don't know our ohms, we come back to our pi, we cover up the R, V divided by A, okay, volts divided by amps, 12 divided by 8. So 12 divided by 8 equals 1.5. So that means that we've got 1.5 amps, oops, <laughs> sorry, 1.5 ohms. Oh man, I almost, almost took that and ran with it, didn't I? 1.5 ohms in the circuit. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is this, okay? We're going to keep all this handy right here, but it looks like, hey, we solved everything in the circuit. But what we have to pay attention to is that sometimes we don't have all these amperage values available. And the whole purpose of even doing circuit math like this isn't because you're, as a tech, you're going to be doing circuit math in the shop, okay? I, I can't remember a single time that I've ever done this in the shop because I strictly stuck to the repair end of things. And, you know, we're following specs. We're following, um, you know, making sense of diagnostics. So we use these ideas of volts, amps, ohms, and the relationships into the diagnostic sense. But as far as getting down to the deep, dark, little, tiny um, bits of activity in the circuit itself, we, we don't get that deep into it. We worry about the general resistance values, general voltage values, general current values that are involved in a circuit. And typically that's all filled out for you by uh, a manufacturer with what to expect, when to expect it. And there's a lot of variables that go into that, um, those specs that you, you get, okay? And there's a, there's a couple of really good reasons why. Um, chiefly because the operating conditions of a car are nowhere near as static as something like doing the math okay the 12 volts that we see here in this battery you're not going to see something that static in the vehicle's operation okay you go up to the vehicle it might have 11.9 volts when you go to start it up you know a weak battery you manage to crank over it fires up the alternator kicks on and uh you know will give you between 13 and a half and say 14 and a half volts and it's going to try to charge this battery back up you stop the car later on it comes back, it's got 12.71 volts. You come back another 20, 30 minutes later, 12.6 volts. And hopefully that's where it stays because that's the, the good battery voltage. You go, you know, but maybe it goes down to 12.4 as it sits because the battery is getting weaker and weaker. You know, you're operating the radio, the lights, these, these variables change. And that's just right here at the battery, okay? You also take into consideration things like lamps and fans and solenoids and computers and everything else that's using electricity um, develops heat while it's working. And heat affects resistance. So your resistance changes. Well, if your pressure is constantly changing all over the place in little tiny amounts and your resistance is changing in small amounts because of heat and activity, that means that the current flow is likewise going to be changing all over, all over the place. Okay. 
So when we work on cars, we're looking at, at a set of specs under the conditions that the manufacturer says to look at. It'll tell you, turn the circuit on, then do this, or leave the circuit off and do that. Um, and, but at no point in time that you're ever going to be doing like this kind of circuit math unless you're going to be building a circuit or really, really have to try to solve a, uh, a uh, diagnostic issue. Okay, but I can say as an electrician uh, working in the past for uh, different, different companies or for Ford, Mercedes, Benz, um, never did it. You know, never did it in the Army when <laughs> I was working as a field electrical systems repairer. You know, you, you use the general ideas all the time, all the time you use the general ideas, you know, what would look crazy or what wouldn't, you know, in terms of general values, but not getting out to super, super small decimal places and things like that. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and review this real quick and then we'll carry on. So I'm glad I make that one little point there. So we've got our parallel circuit here. We have our 12 volts total. Okay, we looked at our two resistance values on each branch, three ohms and three ohms. By using those two values, we got our branch currents, four amps and then four amps. We added up the amperage because current flow in a parallel circuit adds up, you know, branch to branch to branch to get our total. So we ended up with eight amps of our circuit total for the current. We took our voltage value, divided our total amperage, and then came up with 1.5 ohms for our resistance value total. Okay, but that's only one pathway. So now we're going to prove it the other direction, okay? And what we use here is, I'm going to use a different color marker so you can still see this really, really clearly here. What we do is we have a parallel resistance formula that we're going to use, okay? So you take R1, that's resistor 1, times R2, that's resistor 2, from branch 1 or branch 2, over R1 plus R2, okay? Now, this right here is a magic, okay? And there's a whole lot of points to be made about that here in a little bit. Keep in mind, this formula only works with two branches, okay? And there's another math, uh, math problem you can do to solve multiple branches by doing a series of fractional math over and over and over again. However, it can get a little busy on the eyes and a little busy on the brain and is not exactly quick, okay? So I like to use this one here and you can only do two branches at a time. I will show you how to get past the two branches into doing multiple branches with this in a little bit, okay? So here's our formula. Let me get this, uh, let me get this a little bit cleaned up here because it looks like we're a little busy on our screen. Okay, so we'll, we'll get rid of this here. Let's come back. Whoops, where my mouse go? There we go. So A1 is 4 amps. A2, 4 amps. We'll make sure that's also something right there. So now let's go ahead and get a, uh, come on thing. Let's do our math here. So we have 3 ohms. We're not going to put the ohm, the symbols here for this because we're dealing with math here, okay? Um, 3 times 3 over 3 plus 3 oops, equals 9 over 6 equals 1.5. Okay, and now that we know what we're working with, we can go ahead and put the ohms value right here. So you see this 1.5 ohms here is the same as this right here, and it proves it all out. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one here for you. We'll clean this up. Here, clean that up a little bit. Clean this up a little bit. I'll fix those bulbs here in a sec. Actually, let's just make this all look a little prettier, huh? So we have a voltage total, ohms total, amperage total, we have resistor one, resistor two, amperage one, amperage two. set this up like this, okay? Let's go ahead and fix our poor pitiful little bulbs over here. All right. And we're going to go ahead and pick our volts value. We'll leave that at 12 again. Resistance value. Let's go ahead and use 2 this time. 
We'll do one more after this with some values that are not even, just to show you that it still works. Okay. So we have a voltage total, 12 volts. We don't know what our amps total is. We don't know what our resistance total is. But we do know that branch one has two ohms. Branch two has two ohms. Okay. A1 and A2. Look back at our ohms off high. We're missing amperage in each branch. 12 divided by 2, 6 amps. 12 divided by 2 for the second branch, 6 amps. Total amperage in the circuit, 12 amps. Okay, we go ahead and we look at our ohms up high for our missing resistance. Volts divided by amps, 1. Okay, 1 ohm of resistance total. 12 divided by 12 is 1. Now let's go prove this out. Okay, oops, let's put our formula back here so we can see this again. Come on. So we've got our resistance formula for parallel. R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2 equals the resistance total in the parallel circuit for two branches at a time. Two at a time. You can't go R1, R2, R3, R4 all the way across. Doesn't work. Okay, same down here. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Two at a time. All right? Keep it simple. So we've got two plus two over, oops. Shame on me. Two times two over two plus two equals four over four equals one. Uh oh. This is the same as this again. Say it ain't so. Right? Go ahead and clean this up. Got a little bit different values going on here. Let's just show you does it this works whether or not using nice little easy values to deal with in your head or not. Okay. So let me set a little something up here. Because just to be fast and not wait for my brain to kick in, we're going to go ahead and make use of a calculator in case we get decimals. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Let's go ahead and use a voltage value that you're going to encounter in a car. Around 14 volts, say something's running. You got a left and right tail light here, okay? And let's set our ohms value to um, something a little, little different here this time. Okay, let's just say we put in the wrong bulb on one side, all right? And we end up having, let's see here, we've got a, three ohm bulb right here, okay? And then a um, two ohm bulb right here, okay? Now you can see all these values. You can see that 14, the three, and the two. They're not gonna play nice together, are they? So get ready for a little decimals coming on up, okay? So our voltage total in the circuit, we've got as 14 volts. R1 is three ohms. R2 is 2 ohms. Okay, now in order to figure out the amperage of branch 1, we'd have to do 14 divided by 3. And 14 divided by 3 is 4.6 infinity. Okay, so 4.66 infinity. Okay, and that's going to be amps. 14 divided by 2 is 7. At least that one's nice, right? Okay. So we're missing our value on amps or ohms or volts or whatever. We make sure you use our pi to figure out the math problem we need. Okay, so our amperage total here is going to be 11.66 infinity. Now, the thing is, is as far as I'm concerned, working in this basic level, two or three decimal places is fine for the circuit math. I prefer two, and there's wiggle room, okay? So if you're like within, say, a tenth or so, of your answer, or you know, one point, you know, point one five, or, or what have you, um, we'll call that even, Stephen, for right now. Okay, is it mathematically precise? No, but we're working in just getting the idea down right now about the relationship between volts, amps, and ohms. Um, we're not getting into, um, you know, uh, you know, engineering or electronics at this point yet. We're just dealing with the basic, basic electrical and getting the idea down. As time carries on, as we get more advanced, we get more precise, and then we could uh, work with it there. But for right now, if we get close, we're going to be all right, okay? 
I want you to get the idea and not, not spaz out, all right? So now, in order to get our resistance total for our circuit, okay, we'd have to divide four, um, 14 by 11.66666, on and on and on it goes, okay? And this is where you're going to start seeing discrepancies build up because we're not dealing with all these decimal places here. So we take 14, divided by 11.666. I'll just add a few in there just to help it out. And then we get 1.2. And see, that's going to go. There's a bunch of decimals here. Give me a second. So we've got 1.2. And... That's going to carry that to, yep, nope, 1.20. Okay, because all the decimals are way over here where they started adding back up. So we'll call it 1.2 ohms, okay? Now, just to see if this works, works properly, if you'd sit in there, take 14 and multiply it by 1.2, you end up with 16 point, um, whoops, wait a minute. <laughs> 14 divided by 1.2, I'm sorry, 14 divided by 1.2 you get 11.666 infinity. So it works out closer than some others you'd be uh, working with. Okay, but now we got to sit there and do our, our circuit math over here to make sure that we're not nuts, okay? So we've got three times two over three plus two equals six over five, okay? And if you take your calculator, you go six divided by five, you end up with 1.2. Okay, and that works out nicely, all right? Let's do one, uh, let's do one more like this, and then we'll add in a, a couple of branches and show you that trick, okay? Because I don't want this video to drag on too terribly far, because we can keep doing this over and over again all day long until we're blue in the face, and too much at one time is not healthy for you at all. Little by little, we learn our things. Small bites, okay. It's real easy for us teachers to sit there and go and go and go and go and go because we know what we're talking about, <laughs> you know, and we want you to know what we're talking about and we can get a little bit of eager beaver syndrome going on. So let's clean things up a little bit here. We'll go back to our 12 volts because we're going to start playing around with this a little bit more intensely. And 12 is just a nice, easy number to work with here. So um, let's go ahead and we've got to erase our pretty little formula here because we're going to get in the way now of this. And we're going to go like this. Oops, I'm not going to erase that. Shame on us. Oop. And we're going to get ready to do something here. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to our 3 ohms value here. Man, that was awful. Twitchy hand. Oop. Three ohms value. Three ohms value. Okay, so we know how that works there. Let's do this. Let's poke another hole in. And by the way, you see all these grounds that keep adding. Boop, boop, boop. You could have this one wire coming all the way down. If that's easier for your your uh, eyeball okay three ohms right here okay now this is where it gets a little bit more steps to it right so now we've got to add in a few things here just in keeping with our little way of doing things We have our voltage total at 12 volts. Okay. We've got amperage, or we have our resistance uh, of each branch all set to three ohms. Okay. Three, three, three. Meaning that our current totals are going to be four, four, and four. 12 divided by three, 12 divided by three, 12 divided by three, just like we did before. Okay, now currents in a parallel circuit all add up. So I have 12 amps total, meaning our resistance total is going to be easy to figure out. 
because all we have to do is 12 divided by 12. Remember our Ohm's law pi over here, right? If I'm missing my resistance value, volts divided by amps, okay? So volts divided by amps, 12 divided by 12, leaves us with one ohm of total circuit resistance, right? Let's prove this out. Now, I said we can only do two at a time on that. So we have got, actually, let's, let's make this up here so it stays out of our way for the remainder of the time here. And I'm not constantly redoing this. Okay. So we've got 3 times 3 over 3 plus 3 equals 9 over 6 equals, um, wait a minute. Hmm, something feels weird, doesn't it? It seems like I'm going in the wrong direction here, but I'm not, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, so right now we have 1.5, but that's only for two of these branches here, right? Okay, so keep this in mind. This becomes this new value on top now. Check this out. 1.5 times 3. Equals 4.5. And 1.5 plus 3 is also 4.5. 4.5 divided by 4.5 is 1. 1 and 1. Right there. It proves that right out. Okay? Now, how that worked is like this. We took our first two branches. We have your R1 branch. We have your R2 branch. And we solved it. Okay? We have our R3 branch down here, and it comes around all the way this way, and we solved it, okay? And this got this, this one right here was our, uh, ended up being our resistance total because we had these three branches. This works like one of those little fighting tournaments or a sports tournament where you got all the contenders up here and then the champion left over who's going to do that, the, the last bit of um, uh, competition, right? It could be bowling or darts or, you know, the Tekken tournament online video games or whatever you want. Okay, but if you pay attention to this idea right here, okay, let me, let's clean this up and I'll draw it out a little bit better here. And let's get rid of all this for right now because we're going to be changing this up here in a second. Again, we're going to have to change our format because we're running out of room in one line. Okay. And keep with those three ohms right there. Let's just use this space right here. Okay. This is our little space for our idea. I'll erase this here in a minute. Just keep it, the rest of it out of your way. So, if I'm solving resistance totals, I've got two branches that are going to solve to one, right? Well, if I've got more than one branch going on here, okay, i got to find a way to do the circuit math where I take two branches and solve it into one final answer and repeat it over and over. So if I have a third, I'll come down here and solve it like that. However, what if I have a fourth? Okay, what I would do with that is solve two and two, and come in like that, and then those two would solve to one. Okay, and then say I had a fifth, I'd come all the way over and go like that again. Okay, if I had a set of six, check this out. Let's say I had six of them. I would solve that, come on over here, okay, and come continue on, and then solve it again. You see how this works. As long as I'm working in pairs, I'm good to go. Okay, I could even get really, really freaky with this. I mean, sometimes you'll see circuits like this for like lighting and what have you. 
where there's like a ton of lights all in one one area for little purposes like a trailer or something where you would have to go like this say you had i mean do i have that eight right and i would take these all two at a time two at a time okay and solve them and then two at a time and then solve it as long as i'm working in pairs i'm good to go all right so just keep that kind of thing in mind and you're going to be just fine for our purposes at this level okay back here put our 12 volts back in here and we got three ohms let's i'm doing that backwards let's add in one more branch we'll make this the uh the last one we do just to prove our point three ohms again oh wow okay let's go with what we know already okay so we've got three ohms, three ohms, three ohms, three ohms. Okay, and our amperage is we all know those because we've been doing them over and over again. These are all four, 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 and four. Okay, so you have four, 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 and four, they add up. That's going to be 16 amps. Okay, if you got 12 divided by 16, you run into 0.75 ohms as your total resistance, okay? So 12 divided by 16, 0.75. Now, what we do is this to solve our circuit math here. So we've got three times three over three plus three equals nine over six, and that equals 1.5 right so that's two of them so we have two here and we have two down here right so we know that if we do these two it's going to be the same answer here right track it okay so this is this accounts for r1 and r2 and then let's just see just for the visual effect here so i'm not assuming you have this stashed in your head like you have a whiteboard in your head right So we had did two and two. Now we, our two factors are like this: 1.5 times 1.5 over 1.5 plus 1.5. Okay. Two point two five divided by three. Okay. Two. Oops. 2.25 divided by 3 equals 0.75. Okay, and then we'll ohms. And it comes back out. We can keep playing with this all day long and it'll keep doing it over and over. As we uh, carry on with our work, you will see these values change into different ohms values. Okay, um, I'm not going to get terribly unrealistic with it. Um, however, at certain points in time, I will throw just really weird values in there to show you that it works whether or not everything is even or uh, whether or not everything is, um, you know, the, 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 the same or wildly different or what have you. So if you've got a bunch of weird ohms values in there, it'll still work out for you, okay? So let's just take a look at some, uh, a little recap here for some parallel circuit information. This has been given in other areas, but this is a few things you wanna keep in mind, okay? Parallel circuit always has more than one branch flow, okay? More than one branch. So that's two or more, okay? Parallel circuits. Amperage. adds up branch to branch on and on that goes okay 
amperage adds, okay? So if I add branches, the number of my branches goes up. That means my resistance goes down. And my amperage goes up. Okay, that's always, always going to happen. Now watch this. Also with the parallel circuit, a fault in one branch does not affect the others except shorts, which we'll be talking about soon when we talk about our faults, okay? So like if I turn off the circuit, break a bulb or something, or get resistance in the circuit, everything's gonna be fine. But if I get a short, it could cause other trouble, okay? And again, when we start talking about faults, we'll be describing a bunch of that stuff. Okay, so just a little bit of ideas to keep in mind when you're dealing with parallels here. There's a lot more to elaborate on, okay? But as far as getting the basics of some of the circuit math, I hope that helps out. And I want you all to have a good day. I want you to be able to look at this and perhaps start making some drawings and doing a little bit of it yourself. Worksheets are on the way for this kind of thing. Um, and um, just to give you a little exercise and show you the uh, relationships involved, okay? So take it easy and have a good one.